Hello welcome to our channel once again. Today we are going to chat about uh, implementing slowly changing dimension type 2 using Databricks. This is a very um, frequently used use case for data warehouse. We have to maintain a uh, history of your source data because source is not maintaining it and being a data warehousing uh, application you have to keep track of all the changes which has happened over the time. So this can be done in multiple different ways in many different components like you can achieve this in uh, mapping data flow as well or in a SQL server or whichever RDBMS you are using or you can do it in Databricks also. So today we will see how you can do it. In so stay tuned till the end and we will see how you can do it for a single table or you can even implement this for multiple different tables in a generic way. So before we uh, go to our uh, demo and the code, let's understand what is slowly changing dimension type 2. Okay, so I will show you. Okay, so first thing is to understand what is a CD type 2 before we can start doing it. Okay, so this is a simple uh, table. Suppose it's an employee table which has ID, name and address. So other two columns are used for uh, maintaining your SCD. You, you are going to get only ID name and address from your source. Suppose you have four records, okay. All of them have different ID. ID is unique and expiry date is 12-31-9999. It means this is all active records. Now this is current day snapshot. Tomorrow you may get a new source data from um, from your system. So the bottom one is the so the bottom one is the new data new snapshot which we have got. Okay. Now if you notice here, you will see that there is a one record which is updated, which is ID two. Now the address has changed. Here you will see one new record has been added. So that that is going to be the new insert. And now you will notice the second table does not have the ID one. So that is actually the deleted record. Now we'll see after the merge as CD type 2 how our table should look like. So this is how my table should look like. The ID 1 which has been deleted should get marked as D and the expiry date should get updated with current day or whichever day we have implemented or we have applied this change. Now you'll notice number 2, ID number 2, we will still retain the previous data. We are not going to delete it. That is the property of SCD type 2. But we have to mark this as expired, and the new ins new record will be inserted with a new address, and which will have expiry date as twelve thirty one nine 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 nine. So here, how we identify active record is based on the active uh, based on expiry date. Go ahead and do our data preparation for this demo. So as I shown you earlier in my um, PPT, I have created two different CSV files. One is the original data, how my snapshot of today's date data will be. And there will be one more test data for updated record. Here also you can notice ID 1 is being deleted, 2 is updated and 5 a new record has been added. Now here we will uh, read those uh, uh, CSV files as, as part of our data preparation. So here we are using delta table feature of Databricks. So if you are not aware of this, you can watch our video on the delta tables, how you can create it. It's a very new feature from uh, Databricks and it's very useful too. We have a uh, dedicated videos around that. So let's see here how you are using it. So first thing what you are doing is we are reading our uh, um, CSV file. And we are loading into data frame. This is how it looks. It's the same thing the way we have seen in Excel sheet. As a next step, we are saving that in the delta table, which is a delta format. Okay, now the, our third step would be to read updated record, which we have got, suppose today, which we have to merge. That is done as part of this command four. Let me execute this. Yeah, so we have uh, added that as a temp view and I'll show you how the data looks like. So this is again the same thing what we have seen in our CSV file. This is how our new data is coming from the source. Now next, so now our uh, um, task is to identify whether which of the records are insert, update or deletes. 
what we are going to do to identify that is a simple operation if you are aware of the sql uh, joints it is very easy to find out using left outer joints or the inner joints the so first operation we are doing is to identify if we have got any new record so we are comparing uh, what we already have and what is a uh, what we have got new using uh, left outer join and the null checks here one thing to notice is that when you are comparing this with the existing data you always keep this uh, condition so if you are having expiry date you can use expiry date or in some cases uh, some of the tables use is active flag also which is fine so either of them has to be used to identify the inserted record so while you are uh, identifying updated record we are doing an inner join it means that, that data is still available in both the tables and it joins on the key columns and this is an important part here so this join or uh, this condition should contain all of your non key columns we are trying to identify if any of the non key column has changed either any one any one if you have multiple columns all of them should come here any of them have changed we have to mark this as u and the same way and the third one is the reverse left outer join we need to identify something which was available earlier but it has not come in the today's data source so this way we are trying to identify all the key columns with their insert update and delete here you can see the outcome of this now as expected number one has been identified as d record which will be deleted two has been identified as update record and the 5 one is identified as a new record so i did this just for the demo purpose so that i can show you clearly how the query should look like and how the output will be now we are creating a temp view out of this uh, result set which will be stored in df underscore change now last activity will be to merge this data what we have already identified as i u and d so let's see how we'll do that so here this is an important step but i will come to this later first we will see how we can merge it it's going to be a very simple query i made it very simple for everyone to understand so if you if you like if you look at this query we are using a merge join here so when we are merging to our, our delta table employee and we are using the table the temp view which we have created after identifying i u and d we will will join based on the key column and we will check if it is u and d if we have identified that key as update or delete we have to expire the previous record which we already have okay and we also have to uh, create one key statement because if it's a d record deleted record we'll have to change the flag of the existing record itself but if it is a update record we'll have to maintain that uh, flag whatever is already there so once we have updated our existing record we have to insert the new record which has come as i or even the updated one because for the updated ones also we need to insert a new record so that operation is done in a second way so once the operation is done this is how my data set looks like so you can notice the way we wanted uh, one has expired it's marked as d with the expiry date to the previous record has been marked with the current date because it is expired now now this is the active record with u and the fifth one has also been inserted now i'll come to um, this step which we had skipped now when we are using a temporary view you need to be careful because temporary views are lazy execution or lazy evaluation so in case you are doing your merge operation in two steps as soon as your first steps gets executed your temp view will also get changed which we don't want in this case that's the reason what we are doing is as soon as we have identified our insert updates and delete we are writing it into a permanent physical file so that it does not change we are writing to the physical file and again we are reading it from here what it is doing is it is making sure that even after my changes to my um, permanent table this is not going to affect my temporary view that's the whole purpose but this is a very important step okay thank you thanks for watching